Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, Which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, The first is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Well said, teacher. You are right in saying he is one and there is no other than he. And to love him with all your heart all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Our Novena Prayer. O great Saint Peregrine, you have been called the Wonder Worker because of the numerous miracles which you have obtained from God for those who have had recourse to you. For so many years you bore in your own flesh the debilitating disease of cancer. I seek God's healing. Help me to imitate your enduring faith in the face of my great challenge, that I may trust the Lord as you did in your time of affliction. Help me to find the strength to proclaim God's presence in my life, despite the anguish and fear this disease causes in me and my loved ones. O glorious Saint Peregrine, aided in this way by your powerful intercession, I will sing to God now and for all eternity a song of gratitude for his great goodness and mercy. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth the Lord thy Spirit, and they shall be created. And thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who sent the Holy Spirit to enlighten the hearts of the faithful, grant that we, by the sending of the same Holy Spirit, may be ever truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. This we ask through Christ our Lord. St. Peregrine. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. To continue the metaphor of a journey, let us consider that on that journey, no matter where we're going, if we're going on pilgrimage, we never do it alone. We never do it alone. There's always going to be encounters on the way. And most importantly, when we're traveling a road of sorrows, a road of uh, difficulty, there's always those people that we meet along the way who assist us on the path. Consider even our Lord. As he walked his way of the cross, he met many people. Simon of Cyrene, was brought in to assist him to carry the cross. He met the Blessed Virgin Mary on the way. He met the women of Jerusalem, St. Veronica, and all the people who lined the streets who were there for various reasons, either to jeer or to weep. Likewise us. When we walk down a path of tears, of trial, difficulty, we encounter people in our life who we must be eminently grateful for, eminently grateful. And this is one of the ways in which we are sustained on a journey, is by expressing that gratitude for those who assist us on the way. If you've ever watched the movie, or better yet, read the books, the Lord of the Rings, the entire story is a journey. 
And it is, in some ways, a passion play. It's a metaphor for the struggle that all of us must endure, all of humanity or each of us as individuals. Taking the thing that troubles us, that harms us, but that we can't separate ourselves from, and eventually releasing that and allowing it to be destroyed. But on the way, there's all these different characters that are met who aid the journey. And sometimes we have someone, like Frodo had uh, Sam, someone who is always there, the faithful friend, the one who helps us most. And those of you and those of us who have been involved in dire health problems, there's always someone there who is a caregiver. Some of you here may be caregivers yourself. And that is a very difficult work. It's exhausting, physically and spiritually, and sometimes financially. My grandmother, she was one of the caregivers for my great-grandmother. So there's two daughters that that helped care for my great-grandmother. And then in her turn, my grandmother was cared for by my grandfather and my, my mother and the other siblings. There are many examples of this same thing. So when we are the ones suffering, when we are the ones afflicted, we have to remember gratitude. Because it's very easy to lose our patience because we're agitated already. And very easy to forget how good and how generous and how loving these individuals are who give of their very heart, their very life, their time, everything, in order to care for us. We see this in our community all the time, particularly with our elderly and infirm brothers. There's always someone caring for them. As, like here, at St. Dominic's, right? Brother Gregory was the constant companion of Father Felix, to help Father Felix as he was getting older and, and more sickly. And in our own community in Portland, we have, well, he's here now for a time, but uh, Brother Joseph was, was caring for Father Duffner. And many other examples that I could give from St. Albert's, where I saw the same, same relationship, where the caregiver spent himself in order to care for the one in need, the one who is vulnerable, the one who is sick and, and suffering. And this work develops holiness in the caregiver's heart. But for the one afflicted, also holiness can be magnified through gratitude. And if we continue to pour out that gratitude, then doing what I mentioned yesterday, which is the rejecting of the material consolations and focusing principally on divine consolations, becomes that much more easy. Because again, it takes the focus off of me and my suffering and my pain, and it allows me a moment of charity and generosity through patience to recognize the good work of someone else in my life, even when I'm enduring terrible trial. There is many famous stories of the saints who in their affliction, they refused to recognize it and they would focus on the other people in their life and their communities. And it was only later or towards the end of their life that their community or superiors knew about the suffering that they were enduring, like St. Bernadette or like the Dominican uh, patron saint of cancer, uh, John Salomone. There are many, many examples of this. And their humility is what is most striking. It's not that they don't want to burden other people. We have to get that out of our mind. We should allow ourselves to be burdens to others. It's an opportunity for them to practice charity. But in return, in return for becoming objects of the charity of others, we must be grateful 
grateful for the charity that they have given because they don't have to. They might be family, they might be friends, they might be paid professionals, but none of them have to be kind. None of them have to be loving. None of them have to do what they're doing. And so as we travel down our own particular road, our own journey towards heaven, we have to remember each and every one of those people who along the way have aided us in body and in spirit and give gratitude to God for them and express to them directly the gratitude that we have in our heart. And this will eradicate in our own hearts any remnants of selfishness or anything that we're holding back the temptations to be miserly and the temptations to be angry and the temptations to despair. Gratitude is an amazing virtue. It sheds light in dark places, dark places that you didn't even know existed. And as you become more generous of spirit, that spirit enlarges and it begins to encompass everyone else around you, just like everything else we've spoken about. And that gratitude spreads to other people. And then they are able to realize all the good things that they've been given in their life. Because as we say as Dominicans, God the giver of all good things. Every day before dinner, we always recount God as the giver of all good things. And so we give him thanks for the big things and the little things. The trials, the temptations, the sufferings. But in particular, we give him gratitude for all those loving people in our life who express God's mercy and care through their actions for us. Our prayer to St. Jude. St. Jude, glorious apostle, faithful servant and friend of Jesus, the name of the traitor has caused you to be forgotten by many, but the church honors and invokes you universally as the patron of difficult and desperate cases. Pray for me who am in need of God's mercy. Make use, I implore you, of that particular privilege accorded to you to bring visible and speedy help where help was almost despaired of. Come to my assistance in this great need that I may receive the consolation and help of heaven in all my necessities, tribulations, and sufferings particularly. And that I may praise God with you and all the elect throughout all eternity. I promise you, O blessed Jude, to be ever mindful of this great favor I will honor you as my special and powerful patron and encourage devotion to you. St. Jude, pray for us and for all who honor and invoke thy aid. Amen.